All right, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the Zoom. I'm going to start admitting everybody in the room. We are live on uh, YouTube as well. Thank you for coming in. If you're joining us live, go on ahead and let us know where you're joining in from. Go on ahead and throw your digital business card in the chat so that we can connect if we haven't connected already. Uh, Ruben, it's good to see you on. Sanders, you as well. Thanks for joining for this Monday. Um, we'll see how long this one goes. I hope everybody had a great weekend and had an opportunity to will, skill, and refill, and we're ready to start the week off right. So this is the beautiful part about every week. We get a reset. In fact, every day we get to reset. So you have an opportunity to start anew and um, really make a plan. And this is what Monday Sprint Planning is all about. It's about getting our plan together for the next five to seven days ahead. And it's about putting things down and getting organized with the way we're prioritizing our time, how we're blocking our time, and the activities or action items we need to take care of. Now, um, as many of you know, some of these items may be time sensitive, right? I've gotta be at this place at this time. And you wanna have those in your calendar. So we've talked about this on past trainings. We've talked about this on past discussions. Uh, if you're not doing it already, make sure that you've got yourself a calendar or some type of scheduling system. I'm a big fan of Google calendars um, and make sure you're putting in or blocking time when you have to uh, get stuff done or if you have to be at a meeting or things like that. So I'll share real quick um, the example Google calendar uh, that I put together that just has our week at a glance on it. And really uh, just prioritizing what we have going on here. So we're on our sprint call right now. This shouldn't take us more than 15 minutes, 20 minutes, if you are planning diligently about what you have for the week. And then to review your plan on a daily basis and make sure you're making measurable progress, right? Uh, everybody knows we have Tech Tuesday at 2 p.m. Central time. Again, uh, you adjust for your time zone. That's 1 p.m. for me in the Mountain Standard Time where I'm at in Colorado here. Uh, mindset of a champion on Wednesdays. On Thursdays at uh, 10 a.m. Mountain Time or 11 Central, we do our Thursday Mastermind. If you have any ideas or suggestions for topics that you want to cover on either the Tech Tuesdays or the Thursday Masterminds, please put those in the uh, Facebook group chats and we can take a look at those. And then that leads us to our Friday with the founders on Fridays. So again, you want to start blocking things out. This is how simple planning works. But if you're not putting your plan down in writing and then measuring against that plan, you're truly putting yourself at a disadvantage. Um, some other things that you can do, you can start blocking in time, time that you're going to be working or focused on your specific ventures. If it's your primary hustle, if it's your side hustles, make sure that you're putting some time aside to diligently work on that. Otherwise, you're gonna find an excuse on when or why not to get that done. Um, and then we've talked about everything within the wheel of life. So if you're thinking about things outside of work, outside of career, outside of finance, make sure you put those into your calendar as well and block them out, make them a priority so that you're starting to create a calendar that encompasses everything that you need to take care of. And then, you know, really what we wanna be talking about this week is our weekly goals and our action items. Okay, what are your goals for this week? Do you have a certain number of outreaches you want to take care of this week? Is it one outreach? Is it 10 outreaches? Is it 100 outreaches? You're going to set your goal for this week on outreaches. In addition, think about follow-ups. How many follow-ups do you need to do this week if you want to reach the goals that you've set for yourself? Okay, maybe that's five follow-ups a day. Maybe that's five follow-ups this week. Again, outreaches and follow-ups are going to be the biggest things uh, in expanding your network, right? And your network is your net worth. Uh, so we want to always be meeting new people and adding new people to our network. And we always want to be managing the relationships or the existing relationships within our network. Also think about shares or events. Am I going to go to a certain number of events this week? Are they going to be virtual? Are they going to be in real life? Make that plan for yourself so that you know exactly what you need to do and you can take the brain damage out of everything else. On the follow-up side, on the networking side, make sure you're leveraging your shuffle to take care of all of that. If you're new and you don't know how to do that, you're going to want to join us on Tuesdays because you should have 
Uh, no excuse for managing your relationships and shuffle. I'm going to jump in here real quick and show you the easiest thing to do on a daily basis is to jump into your shuffle, go over to your contacts, come over to the gear and sort your contacts by your upcoming follow-ups. And you can just knock these out as you see them coming in. You're going to see the overdue ones that you need to catch up on. You can see the ones that just happened like five minutes ago. I'm supposed to follow up with Jane Smith again. And then I can just click on a contact. I can review the information about them, how I gathered them, if they left any information, look at any notes, and then take the interaction. It doesn't get more complex than this, everybody, but you have to implement a process or a system so that it supports you. Ruben, I see your hand up. Go on ahead, my friend. Thanks for joining the conversation today. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to everybody here. You hit it right on the head, ER. Uh, let me show you basically uh, what happened. I'm, I'm following up at least five times with this individual. Yep. And each time there was a mix up or a cancellation on his part, I said, no problem. Let's reschedule again. Yep. So the shuffle uh, coffee uh, card that I developed essentially gives him the opportunity to reprogram the time that's best for him. And it yep. goes on my dashboard. Yep. Okay. That led to a shuffle sale yep okay now he's now he's on board etc now the follow-up here is to invite him into lfi's group yep make him feel welcome etc okay second thing sunday is usually we go to church take mm -hmm. care of things i'm back in my planning mode all of a sudden i get a call this is a prospect that is thinking of signing up to one of my affiliates yep I made arrangements prior to that to introduce them to my upline, setting the time, the parameters, because they want, they have a big, big uh, group of people, but they want to make sure that their upline can give them support. Yep. By answering that phone when he called, I was busy and said, absolutely, he signed up. Yep. You never can tell. It's just a matter of being there when they're ready, mm -hmm. but by also being a patient in your follow-up that eventually it takes a little while to progress, but by the same token, and, and it's really great because on a Zoom system, I found a shortcut to introduce them to Shuffle. I go to my card index file and I pull out your card, ER, with a video, mm -hmm. and it shows them that what, what really differentiates every video that I've seen so far is a CRM component of Shuffle, yeah, and it it re, it resonated with a real with a real estate lady that I'm working with now, and they're very hard. They're very hard to capture their time yep. or whatever. But I was the first time to get her get her attention, and uh, so again, keep up the good work, Yar. I really appreciate it, Ruben. Likewise on your end, and again, this is just a testament and a testimonial to the process, right? And working the process, the numbers don't lie. And that's what that's why uh, we, we really want to uh, impress on you the, the, the data set, the numbers and the process because they don't lie, right? Ruben, to your point, five to 12 interactions is what it typically takes for somebody to want to do business with you, um, uh, just based on statistics. Are there businesses or are there scenarios where you talk to somebody one time and they sign up? Sure. But in all um, cases, on average, you're looking at five to 12 interactions. So how are you monitoring and fostering that relationship? Because those five to 12 interactions may not happen in succession, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, you know, for the first, for the next 12 days. It might be, hey, the timing is off, the scheduling is off, we have a conversation, something gets moved around. And as long as you're managing that effectively, and again, you gotta have a tool to manage that. Uh, a lot of people I know, it's an Excel spreadsheet or it's a, uh, a notebook that they're writing all of this stuff down. The reality is out of sight, out of mind. You want to have it in a way that's going to keep you engaged and remind you of what you need to do when you need to do it. Uh, so make sure you're putting them in your contacts in Shuffle. Make sure you're setting those follow-up reminders. Make sure you're taking those notes. Even if you write your notes down in a notebook like I do, I still can snap a picture of that notebook page and link it into my shuffle. 
And then uh, again, when you're adding new contacts in your shuffle, I know Kathy has shown this before, you can add that contact directly to your mobile list as well, right? Add to mobile device. And that way, if you're getting a phone call from that person like Ruben did on a Sunday, you know, you can weigh the priority level of do I pick up this phone and do I answer this phone and uh, see what opportunities yield out of that. So it's, it, it's very critical that you get organized, right? That you make a plan, that you have tools that support you in, in, in managing the whole process and that you take action on everything. And then I think it's important as well um, to take control, right? We all have the choice to make of what actions we're gonna take today, tomorrow, this week. And right now we only have today to work within. You can plan out your week, which is what we're gonna be doing right now, right? Listing out, here's everything I wanna get done this week. Here are all the meetings I have scheduled for this week. Here are the meetings I wanna get scheduled for this week. All of those elements, that's part of the planning process. And then it's the here and the now, right? What am I going to be doing right now with the time that I have available today? Am I going to be reaching out to people? Am I going to be jumping on a call like all of you have jumped on right now? Am I going to be uh, sending my follow-ups or sharing cards or doing outreach or going to an event? Um, you, you know, All of those things you want to have listed down and you want to say, okay, what are my weekly goals? Set some goals. It's not about the what they call the BHAG, right? The big, hairy, audacious goal. A lot of those uh, get set, you know, I've got an annual goal. I've got a five-year goal. I've got a, a lifetime goal, guys, but that's the BHAG. I'm not accomplishing my life goal today. I'm chipping away at elements that lead me in the direction of accomplishing my life goal. So for this week, think about it in this way. What are your weekly goals that are going to help you accomplish your big goals? Is it outreach? Is it follow-up? Is it uh, uh, post-sale information? To Ruben, your point, you know, now that you have a customer, this is in, in essence when the work begins. You still want to stay on top of that customer, help that customer, support that customer, connect that customer, or point that customer in the right direction, because then you'll be able to, one, retain that customer, which is huge. And number two, that customer will start generating referrals for you. Hey, you know who you need to meet? You need to meet my friend, Ruben. Why? Because he helped me out and I know he can help you out. And then it becomes this conduit for additional referrals. So never be afraid to ask for that referral or, or whatnot. So let's talk about weekly goals. What is the number? What is the goal for the long term? Maybe it's your month goal. Maybe it's your quarterly goal. Maybe it's your annual goal. You know, what is 152nd of your annual goal? Think about it in terms of that, right? One week, 52 weeks in a year. What are you going to have in, in place? And, and, and then measure, measure your actions against those goals. Um, here, here are some uh, good examples of this in just everyday relatable things. I went to the grocery store this weekend. I went in with a list. A lot of people go, go shopping without a list. I went in with the list. I pick stuff off the shelf, put it in my cart, scratch through the list. When I'm done with the list, I leave. That's accomplishing your goal and having a list. It's that simple. You know what I mean? But I want to make it simple for everybody. It's the same thing. How many phone calls do I have to make this week or today? Make a list, pick up the phone, start reaching out to those people, scratch through them, accomplish the list. Or think about it in terms of workout. I know Guy's not on this call, but when he and I would go do very structured workouts, right? Upper body, lower body, cardiovascular. You go into the gym already with a plan in mind. Am I going to be doing curls or bench presses or squats? Or am I going to be running a certain distance? Is it high intensity interval training? You already know what you're going to do before you get in there. So you're prepared. You know, I got to bring my running shoes, et cetera. I got to bring my swimsuit if I'm going swimming. You don't just go in blindly without a plan. So why would you do anything different in terms of your week of work or your week of your, your side hustle, your week of your, your affiliate focus, et cetera? So that, that's really what I want to get across to everybody is what's going to be your plan for this week? And write it down, right? Put a big circle around any of those numbers. If you say, I'm going to reach out to three people today, reach out to three, reach out to four. Don't sell yourself short. Just take the actions and then measure against that action. At the end of every day, you can look at it. Did I do the things that I wanted to do today? Yes or no? It's a pretty simple question. If it's yes, put a big W on your list for winning the day. You know, And, and in fact, you win the day. Here's the reality. I think it was um, the 12-week year book 
that I was going through. And they said, you know, the 12 week year, they're taking a whole year, they're accelerating it into three months and they're going through and making a, a plan about that stuff and executing on that. And here's the reality. What they found out is even if you accomplish 65%, just a little over half guys, 65% of your plan, you're going to make forward progress towards your ultimate goal. And even if you did 65% every single day, you'd still make forward progress towards your goal. So don't feel like you have to be perfectly executing your daily plan. You just need to take action on your plan every day and then reflect back on that action at the end of the day and try and course correct or make improvement. 1% incremental improvement as we learned by Atomic Habits is going to get you dialed up. Maybe it's making one outreach and then all of a sudden you're consistently making one outreach and it becomes two and it becomes three and it becomes four. You need to set that expectation for yourself. You need to hold yourself accountable for reaching those expectations. And you need to, again, adjust when necessary to improve. So weekly goals and action items. Think about it. We talk about this all the time. Revenue generating activities. A lot of you will check off today as a win because you joined this phone call. Guys, this is not a revenue generating activity. This is an inspirational and educational activity. We want to work together, learn together, and get into action. But all of us getting on this Zoom today is not adding money to our bank account, right? What adds money to our bank account? The actions that Ruben was talking about just a minute ago that he was working on last week and this weekend, where he makes a referral, he gets somebody signed up, he earns some income off of that, and now he's working towards the next steps in that. It's not rocket science, as I always say. So what are your, your action items for this week going to be? Are you sharing your cards? Some, so, somebody who's watching this, maybe you haven't built a card yet and you need to build your first card. You got to have something to share or something worth sharing in order to uh, put something in front of somebody, even if it's a promo card for them. Um, think about the, I, I think the other thing is we focus a lot on network and networking. And I think that's so powerful that we should really be leaning into this. In today's day and age, we could all go to at least two networking events this week if we wanted to without leaving our house. Think about that. Without leaving our house, we could find two networking events to get on this week. And the reality is at those networking events, we're going to meet people. You might meet one person. You might meet everybody at that online event. You have the ability to connect with those people, even if it's virtually, right? We can all come up with some type of placeholder or QR code that we can use. And you could be showing that QR code right here and saying, I want to connect with everybody. I'm so excited to be here. I love networking, et cetera. And you're going to be amazed at how many people actually scan your code and connect with you. Maybe think about putting a lead capture form on that. Let's exchange information. You know, you give me your information, you can have mine type of thing. And we're starting to build those relationships and then connect with those people, find out who they are, what they do, how they may be able to help you, how you may be able to help them. You see, I see Shelly's got her QR up. I see Sanders, Greg, you guys have yours as well. Again, if you haven't posted that in the chat, we should be networking with each other. If you guys don't have each other's cards on your phone, you're missing an opportunity to support and help each other. So I'm gonna open this up for any comments, questions, tips, tricks, or anything like that that anybody wants to add. Feel free to either raise your hand or put them in the chat. Again, my goal is not to spend Monday sprint planning talking at you, but working together with you. So Ruben, yep, hands back up again, go ahead. Yes, we just, um, Kathy and I, uh, uh, Shuffle, uh, a colleague, just uh, we're uh, shifting uh cards around and the question is going to be and these are really good topics for tech tuesday which is tomorrow yep essentially when someone has a shuffle card and they send it via shuffle it automatically goes into the card index correct the question again was can someone clone that card because the prospects that we're dealing with want to see examples of the cards that are created yep and so you know, I, I didn't know the answer to that, but I said, Tech Tuesday will be the topic of discussion. So, yep. just, so they can be? Yes. So let's go through it real quick, and then we can focus on that maybe as a topic on Tech Tuesday. If you connect with somebody, and if you share a card to them through Shuffle, it will, like Ruben, you were saying, show up in their card index. 
Now, this is where the question becomes, because the answer is, is it clonable? Yes, but it depends. It depends on the person's account. If they have a free card account and you send them a premium card into their card index, they will not be able to clone that card unless they upgrade their account. The same reason uh, or the same holds true if it's a marketplace card and they are not subscribing to marketplace yet. So I, I want you to remember those two scenarios there where it might be a free account. The other, the third scenario is if the card that you've shared with them has cloning disabled, cloning disabled. If you disable cloning, then they won't be able to clone that card. Otherwise, if you go into your card index and click on a card and let's go on ahead and uh, jump back over here real quick. And I'm sure again, we'll reiterate this on Tuesday. We're in our account. We can go quickly to our card index here. Here are all the other cards, right? And then I can click on a card and hit clone card. And if it's able to be cloned, it will pull up that template for me, whether it's mobile, whether it's desktop, and I can start going through the cloning of that card. And it will bring in all of the values if you clone it verbatim and make sure you wanna go in and make sure you're making adjustments based on what you want to adjust on the card. A big thing to be aware of if you're cloning cards, everybody, is links. Because their card may have buttons on that card that have their links on them, you're gonna to wanna to double check to make sure you're switching them out with any of your links or adjusting accordingly. A big thing on cloning cards is mainly having the right layout, right? Using that layout and then going in and swapping out elements and things and sort of making it your own. Cloning is a great way to get off uh, to a good start versus building something from scratch. Is that, Ruben, did that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Is the card, I'm on my phone, is the card index, I don't see it on the mobile, is that yep. correct? So it's not gonna be on the main menu on mobile, I'll show you where it is at. If you click on your contacts, mm -hmm. And then you look at the very top of the contact screen, you're going to see your, your uh, contacts, you're going to see your tags, and you're going to see card oh, index. Got it. Okay. It's got just it. nested in contacts because it's basically cards that contacts have sent you. So a good way to think about it. Okay. So it's just important that because uh, I generally grab a link and then I pick which uh, format I want to send it through yep. versus um, I don't send them very often through. But as long as I make somebody, a contact they don't have to be a shuffle user do they no nope. to get it okay so the uh just they have to be a shuffle user if you're sending it through shuffle like via shuffle so you and i are both on shuffle so i could send a card to you via shuffle otherwise you're doing what you already said i'm generating a link and i'm texting that link i'm emailing that link i'm instant messaging that link or facebook messenger i'm posting it in a group you're doing it through every other delivery mechanism with exception of sending it via shuffle so the via shuffle will automatically put it into your card index and for all of us who are on shuffle if somebody sends you a card through text or email or anywhere else and you're opening it up when you go to save that card it would give you the option to add it to your card index be aware, Jeff, though, on the cloning side, if you're doing it from mobile, you only have access to the mobile builder on your mobile device. So if that card that you're trying to clone is a desktop card, it's not going to allow you to clone it on your phone. You're going to need to jump back over to your computer. The other thing I would say as a big tip for everybody, especially if you're building content this week, think about the two main content elements that you build in, in Shuffle. One, I would say is your digital business card, and that's great for the mobile builder. But if you're building anything that's more attuned to a landing page, and I know, Jeff, you've talked about landing pages and content and all uh, copy and all of that type of stuff. I do recommend that if you're building landing pages, you're better off building them on the desktop where you can really have your Google oh, Doc yeah. up with your copy on it, your images and your files all available so that you can quickly uh, grab it and, and copy them. You're just not going to get that type of quality on a landing page building from your mo mobile device. Right. Okay. Um, how much time does everyone slot between working on your personal cards, networking, learning the platform per week, per day, et cetera? So Rose, Michelle, I mean, I, we can open this question up for anybody on typical time allocated, but the reality is it's going to be up to you, up to the individual, and it's going to be up to your individual needs. 
For some people, I mean, there are times where I have to build a card and I'm versed in the application. It takes me five minutes, 10 minutes to build a card. Sometimes I'll build a card, you know, uh, 20 minutes before a meeting, if I wanna give somebody an example. If we're talking about calls, everybody for this week for sprint planning, there are four calls that we do every week. Monday, which you're checking off right now, it's not gonna go an hour. Uh, on Tuesday, the Tech Tuesday, if you're gonna pick a call, I would do Tuesdays from the technical standpoint and learning the application, right? But Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So that's why when I showed the calendar earlier, we had those calls blocked in. I'll show you, I'll show you it one more time, Rose Michelle. Here's my Google Calendar. Again, Google, why, why do I like Google Calendar? One, everybody's got like a Google email address pretty much. Number two, it's a free application that you can use. It, it, so price is not an objection, right? You don't wanna have any excuse to implement any of these things. So I block in the calls, right? I need to know where I'm gonna be, when I'm gonna be there, and uh, you know, is it online, offline? Then, Rose Michelle, what I typically do, and again, I'm gonna block in my daily stuff. I work from nine to 4.30, that's what I block in. Saturday and Sunday, I typically don't do stuff unless I see a call coming in like Ruben said, you know what I mean? I try to make sure I'm allocating time accordingly. Now, if you're doing this as a part-time side hustle, maybe you're blocking in Saturday and Sunday. Maybe you're blocking in an hour before work starts or two hours in the evening. Your schedule is going to be up to you to do. So don't take this as you got to follow this schedule. Yes, these calls are on fixed times. If you can't make a call, and I talked to Scott the other day, he's like, ah, oh, my schedule has changed. I can't make this call. I've been listening to the replay on the drive home. Again, he knows he can't make it during this time, like, you know, 10 a.m. Mountain Time on Thursday. He's going to listen to it in the evening on his drive home from 5 to 6 p.m. So obviously you have to make it a priority on your end. I've got development calls that I do throughout the day as well. That's blocked all in. And then we talk about the balancing, right? Success to us is a full balance of the wheel of life. Block in anything you want. You can get as granular as you want on your time blocking. Um, you don't really manage your time, but you prioritize it, but you wanna allocate elements or areas where you can prioritize those action items within. You know, so this morning I did family time with my family before I take my kids to school. And it's a priority of mine to do that. I could be online checking emails, but I don't do that until I start my work and go through that type of stuff. So Rose Michelle, it's all about the time you have available, the priority, how quick you wanna get from point A to point B and what you're gonna do in the time you've allotted. So hopefully that helps you out. Any other questions out there or tips or tricks anybody wants to share about making a plan for this week and executing their plan? Okay. I heard a good, uh, I, I read a good thing on, you know, we all know deadlines. Yep. Nothing pushes us like a deadline, right? Sure. You know, hey, we got to leave at 10 o'clock. Well, you know what? I, I usually drink less coffee, <laughs> do a little less time on Wordle and, and get my you know, rear and you're at a doctor's appointment today. So guess what? It's at a time. Yep. So that deadline caused me to get done A, B, and C. And it, I mean, it's, especially for someone like me, I, a deadline seemed to push me. And so I've been trying to do that with uh, a particular writing project that I'm, I'm yep. trying to do now. That is, I've just been procrastinating and it's been dragging. And so I need to, you know, set a deadline um, for that. And you can set little deadlines, right? Uh, Jeff, to your point, my wife has been in San Diego. She went for a, a run with a girlfriend and they flew out to San Diego to do this whole thing. And she had a deadline, right? I've got to leave for the airport at this time in order to make my flight. And all of us have been in this experience before, right? You're getting ready to go on a trip. The trip has a deadline on when you leave and when you have to be packed and when you have to have all your stuff done. And lo and behold, like the day or two before your trip, you just seem to get so much accomplished and still get everything else taken care of before you head out to the airport. Jeff, to your point, setting some of these little deadlines, make a daily plan. I have to have all of my emails answered by 10 a.m., you know? That's my deadline, you know? I don't know what the repercussions are if you don't hit your deadline, but 
set those deadlines for your for yourself. I want to have all of my outreach done by noon. So that way I can do a, a quick follow up or I can check to see if anybody's gotten back to me. Start to set those expectations for yourself or Jeff, I need to have one one page written or 30 minutes of dedicated writing time for this copy done by five o'clock. You know, that's the deadline. Something I like, I've got a little tool up here. You guys may not notice this. It's a countdown timer. I'm going to set myself 30 minutes of dedicated focus work on X, Y, or Z. And then I'll eliminate all distractions. I'll get laser focused and I'll work diligently until my timer goes off. Or sometimes when I'm in a meeting, hey, how long do we have? 45 minutes. I want to be respectful of your time. I'm going to set a timer so that we can hit all of these action items before we have to get off of this meeting. There are ways that you guys can leverage certain tools or skills or knowledge that are going to give you an advantage over not doing it. And I think that's the biggest thing, right? We start just leveraging little tips, tricks, and things like that that help us make forward progress. That's what it's all about. It's about making forward progress. It's nine times out of 10, it's about the journey, right? We're just doing the work, getting there. And then you have the uh, the prize at the end, if you will. Since you brought up uh, the, the countdown timer, just this is probably more of a tech question. Do you guys ever plan on adding a countdown timer <clears throat> element that we can add into our LFI cards to create some urgency? So there's a lot of those types of, um, I would say like landing page elements that are very powerful that we'd love to explore adding. I think one of the things that is challenging on our end, Jeff, is put, putting them in a way where the non-sophisticated person can leverage those elements, set those elements and accomplish what they want to accomplish. I know what you're talking about where having a countdown uh, timer on a page creates a sense of urgency. Like this offer is only available for the next 10 minutes and it's sort of counting down the moment you've hit that page. And now that person is sitting there going, well, I need to start making a decision because I'm gonna lose this offer if I don't take action before the countdown timer ends. So we'll look at those elements. Uh, right now, we're still focused on let's make amazing digital business cards. Let's make somewhat great uh, landing pages. Let's focus on the relationship and the network side of things. And then there's a lot of other amazing tools out there. I know you use some other ones as well that have some of those elements in as part of you know their sales funnels and processes stuff. We are. Thanks. Yeah, Ruben, go ahead. If it'd be interesting too, for those that venture out now because people are venturing out now do one-to-ones and they go to network functions. Yes. And it's a whole different world in networking to be effective. There's basically three things. You want to meet someone that has a common interest. You want to connect for a future meeting mm -hmm. uh, on one-to-one -to, -one to gain a relationship, but they have timers in some of these meetings and it yeah. intimidates the heck out of a lot of people. They have to stand up, and they have to say something and then sit down. Yes. So the question is going to be is, what do you say to get that to be memorable? And it'd be kind of neat if we have a little exercise in one of our, you know, our sessions during the week to teach people that technique. And maybe you have a little timer there, you know, <laughs> yeah. in other words, to get it done. And some, if it's like 30, 30, um, it can be for anywhere from uh, 30 seconds to 60 seconds. That's usually the, the time frame that they get, depending on the a lot of the amount of people in the room. But it really hones in on getting your act together to state your who you are and how you serve yep. and who you're looking and who you're looking for. Yep. Yep. And, and uh, you know, I've often heard that referred to as the elevator pitch, right? Give us your elevator pitch, let us know. Um, there are some different formats or frameworks to identify this is a very succinct message that I can create that follows that format or framework. Maybe we can talk about that on uh, Thursday's Mastermind. Because again, I think what we'll see moving forward is the online experience, what we're doing right now, being in a virtual group, connecting and, and, and collaborating together will not go away. Okay, as, as time goes on, I think some of the old uh, elements that we relied on offline will come back into place. And it's going to be this hybrid model 
of online and offline. And what we want to do is we want to equip ourselves with the tools and the skills to operate effectively in both environments. So what you do offline versus what you do online, there are nuances that are going to help you perform a little bit better. Ruben, to your point, you know, when you stand up, and this might be something that's happening in a virtual networking event as well. Everybody goes through, everybody on the networking call, stand up, state your name, who you are, where you're from, what you do, how you can help others, you know, and then you want to make sure you've already got that pre-planned. Maybe you're practicing it in the mirror, you know, 50 times so that the moment somebody says, Ruben, what's your elevator pitch? Without even flinching, you know, you're saying, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is how I help you, this is the problems that I solve, this is what I'm looking for type of thing. All right, uh, Rose Michelle, I see I'm trying to focus on making more of a valuable card this week so I can share for personal use as well as business this week. Yep. Okay, well, look, just start building. Get something built, get it out there and ask for feedback. You would be amazed when you ask people for their opinion on things, they're willing to give it. Right? <laughs> right, Jeff? I'm willing to give my opinion anytime, anywhere. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I, I read a book once, guys. This was like, uh, I, I know, Ruben, you've got that like 100 questions to ask type of book that Kathy was talking about. But if, you, um, if you've ever wanted to open up or start a conversation with somebody, ask for an opinion. Go over to a stranger. Hey, I just have a quick question. Would you mind giving me your opinion on something? Or, hey, my buddy and I are having a conversation. We can't determine who is right. Would you mind helping us out with answering a question on something? Most people, unless they're busy, they love to give you their thoughts or opinion. You're not trying to tell them something. You're asking, again, a question. Remember, asking those questions, engage with people. Another way to open up a conversation is to give a compliment. Oh, wow, I really like X, Y, and Z, your hair, your shirt, your shoes, your watch, your whatever. They're not going to say something negative back to you. They're going to say most likely thank you. Ruben, I really love the art behind you on your background. You know, would you mind answering a question for me? <laughs> what are they going to say? I can't believe you like that. Oh, my gosh. No, I will never answer. No, it's it's. Yeah, thanks. I, I like that background too. That's why I chose it. You know, let me answer the question you had. So these are things that, especially in that offline environment, I think happen a lot more um, because you can walk up to somebody and just have that. But if you don't have that skill or haven't acquired that skill, try it out. Go test it this week. Walk up to somebody today and just ask for an opinion. Pick a question. You know, do you like mornings or afternoons? <laughs> What's their opinion? They, they probably have an opinion on the subject. I like afternoons because I can sleep in. You know, I like mornings because everybody else is sleeping in and I can get stuff done. Again, it doesn't matter. There is no right answer. It's about starting dialogue. You know, where are you from? What do you do? How, how long have you been here? Are you a native? Are, you know, are you a transplant? Uh, do you have family here? Do you not have family here? All of these things are just things that you start to learn about them. And when you ask all of those questions, they're going to start going, wow, you know, uh, Jeff knows a lot about me right now. Maybe I need to ask Jeff some questions. I've had that happen to me before. You spend 10 minutes talking to somebody and they realize all they've been do doing is telling you all about themselves. And then they'll be like, wait a second, you know everything about me. What about you? Oh, I'd love to tell you about me. What do you want to know? You know, who are you and what do you do? Oh, this, this is my elevator pitch. You know, how can we work together? I'd, I'd love to continue the conversation, et cetera. Yeah, okay, guys, try, we're try about that with, yeah, go ahead, I Jeff. Say, I had my doctor's appointment today. And, and, you know, normally when you go to see a professional because you're paying, it's all about you. Well, Jeff, what are you, you know, what's your situation? It was my skin doctor. And it's all about me, all about me. What have you been up to? And, and, I, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, doc, how was your winter? I haven't seen you yeah. for a few months, but you know, and, and then immediately I'm hearing about the new grandbaby that's coming yeah. and everything. And it's, you know, most people in that those, what appear to be, you know, one direction uh, things like your mechanic, right? Yeah. You're telling them everything about your car, but sometimes, hey, well, how are you doing today? And it's like, you mean, you actually give a damn that I'm a human being. And it's like, um, yeah, even in those what should be one-sided yep. directional conversations, 
catch them, catch them off guard and just say, Hey, what, can I ask you a question? And, and, you know, that's uh, when I talk about offers later this week, the most powerful thing you can do before, because this is what is hard. Everybody likes talking about their thing, their product, their service, their company. But when it comes to asking for the sale or transitioning to giving the offer of the sale, do you guys know what the number one awkward uh, way to uh, eliminate that awkwardness and the, and the fact that, that you don't want to come across as a salesperson? What is the key? Anybody know? Tell us, Jeff. Tell us. Tell us. Ask permission. Russell Brunson learned this the hard way. He didn't make any sales and he went in his room and cried for three days. And the guy says, you know, you just have to, you got to ask him for permission. So he says, Hey, listen, I talk fast. I covered a lot of stuff and I know I just overwhelmed you guys a little bit, but you know what? We, would it be okay? We put a special offer together. Would it be okay if I took just a few minutes more of your time to tell you a little bit about something special that we put together for you? Would that be okay? And he shuts up. And you, once you get the audience or one-on-one, -on -one, you know, hey, Ruben, listen, I, you know, I've been working really hard on something and it may not be of interest to you, but it's a, it's a real special offer I'm giving to all the other LFI people for free. I just want to see, you know, if it'll work. Is, is that, would it be okay if I told you a little bit about what this, this offer that I'm giving to everybody what, and see what you think about it? And see, I'm, I'm asking that permission before transitioning. So if anybody ever is, feels weird about, pitching or selling, make sure you ask permission in a very humble way. Apologize for the fact that you talk too fast, that you stumble over your words. You don't, you know, I'm horrible at explaining this. I probably did an awful job, but because of that, and because of that, I would like to offer you or me and my team have put together, you know, something kind of special for everybody. Would, would it be okay if I took a minute to tell you about it? Yeah. Would it be okay? Okay. I think that's such a great a great position. And uh, Jeff, I know in past um, uh, conversations, you've talked a lot about like, you know, you get them to start to say yes, right? Yes, it'd be okay if you told me that. They're already saying yes now. You know what I mean? Now, if you say here is the offer, et cetera, or if I would you type of, you know, type of questioning, some of that are all elements that we can start to listen to, absorb, and start to leverage in our own practice. And again, independent of what we're all working on, these little tools and tips can be applied in a lot of different scenarios. Would it be okay? I mean, what a great way to position it. You know, somebody might, you, you might get one time out of 10 where they're like, no, that's not okay. You know what I mean? But more often than not, they're going to say, sure, no problem. What do you got? Let me know, you know? All right, everybody, we've spent about 45 minutes on today. This was all about sprint planning. So here, here's the question I've got for you. Have you made a plan for this week, right? I don't care if it's your schedule or your checklist. I personally have both the schedule of what I have going on this week, where I need to be, when I need to be there, meetings, all of those things are already listed out so I can plan the day before of what's coming up. And I have my checklist, right? What's important right now are the tasks that I'm going to be working on in the areas that I have blocked out, right? These are the people I'm going to be following up with. This is my blocked out follow-up time. Let's see how many I can get through. These are the people I'm uh, outreaching directly. This is when I'm going to be working on my card, Rose Michelle. So block some time. For you, it's going to be different than anybody else right? Because we're all unique and we're all individual. It might take me 20 minutes to block out time to build a card. Rose Michelle, it might take you an hour, two hours. Again, you know, diligently focus on the task at hand, eliminate all distractions, set yourself a timer if you need to, and get, get into action. That's the number one thing that it's going to take this week for all of us to make forward progress on anything that we're working on. You need to take action. If you sit there and you think about it, if you have the idea about it, but you don't do anything, you're not even going to be where you were because everything's going to move forward. You're actually going to move behind. So you have to take action this week. The goal is what are we taking action on? Take an opportunity to measure against your goals, your daily goal, your weekly goal, your method of operation, et cetera. 
Focus on getting 65% or more of it done. Aim for 100%. Obviously, aim for 100%. That's the mindset of a champion. But don't discount yourself if you get 65% of the way there. It's all about making forward progress. So let's all make forward progress this week. Let's all win each day so that we can win the week. And I will see everybody on tomorrow's training call. Okay, that's going to be at 2 p.m. Central Time. If you don't have the Week at a Glance card, I'll post it in the chat right now for anybody who might need that. And then uh, also jump in on the community for Jeff Rubin, introducing new members who you've brought in. Thank you for doing that. You know, we as a community can welcome those people in and offer community support as well. Um, if anybody needs anything, I put my card in at the very top of the chat. You have my information. Reach out to me directly. You'd be surprised at how many how many people don't take advantage of that. So I do want to give a quick shout out to Jeff. You and I are going to be connecting right after this. Why? Because you reached out and just said, hey, Yar, can we connect? Pretty easy. <laughs> you know, so again, if anybody needs anything, reach out. We've got a whole community of support. We'll see everybody for uh, Tech Tuesday at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Take care.